but you're still for some reason, you know, being ignored. So, uh, what is up, everybody? Thank you all so much for tuning into uh, another very important segment of Mikasa Sukasa. And of course, I am, as always, your host, Nico House. And I have a very, very special guest today um, who has been part of a movie addressing one of the main topics that I talk about just because I feel like it's something that for some reason is, is growing exponentially, but you know, it seems that mainstream media has been totally ignoring it. Uh, and that is human trafficking, but in particular, uh, child sex trafficking. Uh, and I have John with me. How are you doing, John? Doing great, Nico. Thanks so much for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to see you again. Oh, no, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, and uh, sorry that I couldn't make the premiere. I'll tell you, I did not actually get that email, which is really weird, but you're not the only one who that's been happening to. Pretty much anybody who's been in email correspondence with myself or my partners has had their emails like intercepted. So, uh, but I, I greatly appreciate the invite. And if I could have made it and if I would have known about it, I would have definitely tried to be there. Cause I think that's something that we need to highlight. So uh, you were just telling me you, the, the, what's the name of your movie and uh, what is it about? It's the feature film is called the child's voice. And it's, we did it within a supernatural genre. It's about a homeless teenage heroin addicted boy who hears the voice of a child calling out for help and he answers him and starts a journey down a path to track down the child's killer and in the process uncovers a human trafficking ring. Wow. Uh, You're yeah. covering all the bases there. Yeah. You got the you got the uh, uh the the supernatural, you got the it reminds me of that. What's that one show on Netflix that everybody loves? With the kid with the little bald kid? Everybody talks about it all the time. It's a, oh, I think it's a thriller. Oh my goodness, I cannot remember the name of it now. It's about Why a bunch of kids. <laughs> Man, that's sad. I'm, I'm, Stranger Things. Yeah, or? yeah, like a Stranger Things type of vibe, but you know, you're dealing with uh, some very complex issues. But it does make yeah. it. A little, I think it makes it interesting and a little bit more digestible for people who are kind of like not ready to face the topic head on. Yeah, it's it, a lot of people have said that uh, what this film has allowed us and them to do is to bring new people into this conversation because it's not a documentary. It's not dealing with statistics and facts and testimonials, but it's it's emotionally engaging you through the narrative and through this mystery. And yeah. supernatural element actually, even though it, it is a genre film, it's symbolic of something about the child's voice and the child inside of all of us. And as it relates to these, I guess there's a spiritual element to it, yeah. uh, not necessarily religious, but a spiritual element in terms of the human spirit. And so we wanted to pull all of our, our talents together in storytelling to take fact-based information that we had learned over the year, the last year, really just diving Oof. into the stuff reading books, reading articles, reading court documents, taking firsthand testimonies from survivors of yeah. both human trafficking and wow. on the other side of it, which is not often discussed, but it's still kind of in this, I would say for most people, it's kind of in a conspiratorial type of arena, which is- Yeah, they're, try it's, yeah, they're, they're trying to make it like it's conspiratorial, despite the, you know, the proof that's pretty available. Yeah. Um, I, I have found in this journey to do these films because part of this is my sixth feature in 10 years with the same writer director. Mm -hmm. All of our so. films at No Restrictions Entertainment deal specifically with social issues. We've done things on homelessness. We've done things on mental health. We've done things on prostitution and child abuse. And now we're coming full circle with the human trafficking aspect of it because not only is consciousness rising about this issue, which it has been for many, many years, but all of the sudden with the disclosure of Nixium and Alison Mack and the connections, if you start looking a little bit behind that curtain, you start seeing peeks into Hollywood. Stuff. Yeah. And the things that are gonna be disclosed. I mean, Me Too movement was the first wave and I think there's gonna be another wave coming very soon in Hollywood that's going to expose some of the pedophilia that's been going on in this industry for decades. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to me how um, 
Hollywood pedophilia is somehow like it's a very taboo topic to discuss. And I think that's that's by design, of course. But it's it's like we know about the idea of the quote unquote casting couch. Right. It is not really nobody's really aloof to it. If you've ever heard about somebody trying to get a you know, trying to break into the industry, that's like it's an j- ongoing joke, but it's not really a joke. But right. When you bring that up in a very okay, so like, are we gonna like start prosecuting people for this? Oh, whoa, 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 no, man, it was just, it was just jokes. It's just jokes. It's like, no, I'm, I remember Tyra Banks made a statement a while back saying that every single woman she knew had had to perform some sort of sexual act to get their like breakthrough opportunity. Yep, I was like. Like what? Like every, like every? Not everyone. And I think she's not like after what I have been hearing. I don't think she was exaggerating. No, uh, I think every woman in Hollywood. I've been out here for eighteen years. Every woman in Hollywood that I've ever met, uh, who has worked in this industry in some capacity, has been come on to by someone who had a position of power. Uh, that's not to say that everyone in Hollywood does that. Yeah, but are a number of people who do it because they can get away with it. They have uh, a media that's willing to cover it up. They have HR. Yeah, because um, the media personalities are in on it. They're all in on it. It's, it's, a, it's a culture. It's an environment. It's a system that rewards this behavior. Um, in fact, I would go as far as to say that if you want to have the kind of diversity and openness and transparency that is required in almost every industry, uh, these cosmetic movements, and I'm not taking away from the real suffering of women. This is not what this is about. Yeah. But but dressing up everything and saying we're we're making change, and we're talking about now how they've made an agreement where the casting couch and these private meetings at hotels, you know, we've agreed that they we should do less of those. Oh, um, how nice. We're not <laughs> we're not getting rid of the people who are uh, propping up system and running it and being rewarded financially. Um, I, I do want to say this. I'm not an activist or a crusader on this issue. I'm just very passionate about it because I understand why so many people come here to Hollywood seeking fame, seeking celebrity, seeking validation in some form for the life that they cannot live back home. And they want to express it in, I'm taking it from an honest standpoint, they want to express it through their art and their craft and all of what they, their heart is poured into. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other side of it, which is the attention, getting the fame and getting caught up in certain crowds that easily. Being able to say that you did it, you know, like to yeah. be able to say that you left and you became successful when you got there. Yeah, I, I, I have to say that this system and it's really not just Hollywood. It, it is in almost every system of power that we have globally. That's what I've learned through this process of doing this movie and the research that I've done is that it's dominated and controlled by the, you call them elites. I don't really think they're elite people at all. I just think that they happen to find themselves rewarded in a criminal uh, system that has been uh, funded and preys on people who are, in a state of trauma, uh, in a state of who are sensitive, who are also uh, people who are willing to open themselves up. Because if you look at anything that an actor will tell you, it's 99% rejection. And there's something that keeps them there going. But I've met dozens of women who have told me, both ones that have said, I will do whatever it takes to get X. And I've heard other people who say, "I." I am just absolutely horrified by what I've seen and I, I'm going to leave. So, hmm. you know, I don't think Hollywood can reform itself. I think that the disclosure of these uh, and I think Open Secret is doing a very good job of, of highlighting this issue. It's one of many voices. There's another documentary coming out called Kids Inc. done by Mel- uh, Melissa uh, the Honeybee that's hmm. going to expose hmm. child protective services and what they've been doing for decades in all these states, taking children away from parents who are totally capable of raising their kids. Uh, Uh, Yeah, yeah. And they're destroying their lives based on legal technicalities 
but mainly they're going after the, the vulnerable and the poor who can't fight through the court system to get their children back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's nobody in law enforcement, I mean, there's very few in law enforcement or the state and the government that is even willing to listen to them, let alone help them try to get their kids back. Yeah, um, yeah. So we obviously know that um, this past three years has woken a lot of people up for a number of different reasons. But what we need to try to do as a human family is to unify around these issues of protecting the most vulnerable in our society, which is children. And that starts with the core issue of child abuse. Because if you abuse your child, you humiliate your child, you beat your child in your mind for disciplinary reasons. Not only do we have the evidence to suggest today that that not only affects the development of their brain, but it also by the age, we also know that by the 18 months of age, that the child without its consciousness and cognitive thought already has a self image of whether it will be a positive self image or a negative self image. And growing up in that kind of environment is as real as the life that you have lived or anyone else with loving parents. It is as that traumatized child grows up in a world where they feel attacked and bullied and they have to constantly defend themselves and fight back. And they can never really, to get out of that is a very hard thing to do. It takes all of us to care for, for and love our children so that they grow up to be rational, loving and creative human beings as adults who make rational, creative, and loving decisions. Yeah. That's the message that we wanted to get out with this movie. Uh, that's what I have been awakened to and looking at everything across the board because it's very easy for us to get lost in all the horrible mess that we're in, all the horrible things that have been going on for decades, hiding in plain sight, some of them, some of them coming to light that were never known before. It's mm -hmm. being expressed politically and socially, economically, all across the board, but there is a global awakening to this issue. And I just wanted to get that message out there with this movie to begin pulling more people in to looking at this issue. So essentially you started seeing a pattern formulating. Uh, it's like, wow, these issues uh, are more preventable than what we think they are sometimes. And it, is, it really starts right at the house. Um, well, one, at the house, and then two, uh, we have to address the system that is taking advantage and preying on uh, people, whether it be poor people, people of color, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we just have to kind of address both of those things. Uh, and and uh, one of the first steps, I guess, is, is what you're doing, which is exposure. I know you don't describe yourself as an activist, but I do feel like honest expression is one of the best forms of activism that gets underused uh, and, under, and it's underappreciated given that it's so difficult, especially in Hollywood, I would imagine, to be able to express yourself honestly and also have people listen to it versus, you know, shut it down totally before it ever gets out. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with you 110 percent on that. The only weapon, though, that they have is fear. Yeah. And if you buy into that fear, if we collectively buy into that fear and we back down and we don't speak our minds and our hearts and our voices, as imperfect and without all the information that we have, we're doing, we're doing what we can to step forward and put a hard line that says, you do not cross this line when it comes to kids. Mm -hmm. I think that is a reflection of our consciousness. It will isolate the bad players. It will pull their power away from them because we will have divested. This is not about a boycott of Hollywood. This is about creating stories, unifying behind stories that tell a certain truth, the truth, and allow for us to feel something and then act upon it, which is whether it's in your church, your local community, your local law enforcement, talking to a friend, sharing, a, sharing a, an article, not being afraid to speak outside of these frames that we've been taught to think in and, and digest and speak about because they're really not doing anything to serve us. It's to contain us and keep us locked in this box 
so that they can just pick us off and kind of volley us back and forth between, you know, this side of the issue and that side of the issue. So, really so, so do, if you don't mind, um, yeah. do are you at liberty to to talk about any of the stories that you heard, uh, you know, without obviously mentioning any names, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of served as inspiration for the movie? Well, I want to point um, yeah, I'll, I want to point to a couple source material and then I can tell you some personal stories. Definitely. Uh, for your audience that wants to know more about this, uh, I think a, histor a very well-documented historical count is the Franklin Scandal book. Uh, there are actually two books out there. You can go to Amazon, look at the reviews, and, and probably some of the pages are out there. There's also a, uh, a documentary that was done years ago, but it was destroyed, and somebody found the footage, put it back together, and put it out on YouTube, uh, which coincides with the, the events in the book. Yeah. That was essentially 30-some-odd years ago in Kansas, the Republican Party and Lawrence King, a rising member of the Republican Party, and let me just be very clear, this is not a partisan issue, okay? This yeah. is not Democrat, Republican. This is, this is the global elite. And what they did in Kansas was beyond comprehension to children. It was satanic in nature. They had been caught by local law enforcement. The FBI and the CIA came in, and they told everybody to back the hell off there were people, they released the people who were caught and they released the children back to those people so that they could continue raping and murdering children in Kansas. Wow. Um, there how were long a lot was this? This was over 30 years ago in Kansas okay. it's called the Franklin Scandal. There's been other documented cases of this, but this was probably the first time that this had broken through. And you can go on YouTube. There's there's a scandal that was in the elites um, in in uh, Britain. Uh, there were young children that were interviewed 20 years ago, uh, and these are all documentaries that you can you can look up. The second, the the one though that um, I came across last year was by a person from the Netherlands named by uh, his name is Ronald Bernard. You can look him up. There's tons of videos. He did a five-part interview series, and in summary, what he spoke of in the first, just the first part is enough for your entire audience. They have it in um, English subtitles, and they also have it in English voiceover. I recommend the subtitle one because you can get the emotion from him greater with his voice. But he was part of an elite group of people, uh, of 8,000 to 8,500 people, who basically run the world? All the wars, all the all the uh, economic crashes, all of the human trafficking, and he. I think was, I know. You talking about the banker? Yeah, the banker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the one who taught himself how to be a sociopath. He said. And, yeah, he and, put his conscious in a deep freezer at negative one hundred degrees. Yeah. And um, the moment this. that he he could not go any further, they. They, once you kind of prove yourself, he got invited up to a certain level uh, and they brought him into a church where there were naked women and they were doing these rituals and he thought it was kind of silly. And it was the moment where they offered him to sacrifice the child. Yeah. Was when he broke down and he couldn't, he stopped, he started refusing assignments. He got very sick, very ill. Uh, because what he talked about was that there were these criminals in his syndicate. But you could tell them anything. They could murder people. They could kill people, do anything. But once you touched pedophilia, they would lose their minds and explode. And that was the end for him because he has now admitted, uh, and not admitted, but testified to the fact that when he was young, he was brought up through the church, and he was raped uh, horribly um, as a child, and he hated I life. That part of the interview. Yeah, well, it was in a, a later interview. He's now part of a panel that uh, has combined all these. Bill Benny's on it, Paul Craig Roberts, and some others. It's an international uh, panel on human trafficking and the global elites and what they're doing. 
uh, to this world and destroying it because they truly hate human life on this earth. And um, he, uh, he saw our film. I, I just found this out yesterday uh, and was completely moved by it. Uh, so much so that he had his assistant write us a, a very nice note. Wow. Uh, That's amazing. He was touched by our film. Um, we made this because he was the ins he was the main inspiration behind it of all of the information that we had been reading about uh, over the past year, seeing his articles and his interviews just kind of like it connected everything for us. And then the more that we learn about, you know, I mean, we could talk about the Clinton Foundation and other things. These are just symptoms of a much bigger problem. But yeah. it's such a it's the symptoms of a market that is, is, is of, a, of a very available market. That's the only reason we're even having the conversation about it. That's what makes it bad. Yeah. But I think that um, for us, when I started connecting with survivors, not just online, but in person, who had been ritualistically tortured, um, we're talking about people who are children who are raped repeatedly and are have have had a dozen abortions before the age wow. of 14. wow that's heavy these women um i mean this is just this is not just women this is boys as well but for the women um some of them are raped so badly that they can never have children again they, even with doctors and hospitals trying to do constructive surgery and, and repair their body parts, um, these people are sociopaths that do this. There is no redemption in them. Um, what I have learned through them and seeing examples on video from people who have been uh, arrested and tried from their previous life. When you look no at Alex Mack and Keith Ranieri talking, you know, about acting, they're smiling, they're looking at each other. And, you know, they were engaged fully on in child sex trafficking and branding of women and starvation and mind control. And you just go down the list and the patents that he had on um, satanic uh, programming. I mean, he had a patent, he has a patent out there uh, for satanic programming and study. Um, they are truly ill people, such to the level that they can look at you though, and they can smile at you and talk to you like you and I are having a conversation right now. And they're extremely intelligent. Keith Ranieri, I think, possesses an, uh, an IQ above 160. Uh, some people have said over 200. But that doesn't make him a good person. That doesn't make him uh, an, uh, a I, I don't consider him that an empathetic smart. person, but he just knew how to manipulate people who had a weaker mind than him. Um, this is this is who they are, and the source of all of it, at least from what I see, is that I can't sit here and tell somebody all of these horrible things and indoctrinate you and manipulate you and take you away from all of this unless your mind is corruptible. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. It just means that you have a vulnerability that can be exploited. And we this is why I'm kind of, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we had someone in the, in the YouTube chat that said, uh, this is why most child stars take uh, some downfall because they're because uh, calls from abuse and then abused by the media and gossip. Um, and they, she said that you're doing admirable work. Uh, it's from Amanda Buckner. Thank you, Amanda. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, it's and it's crazy because I noticed that at a very young age also, uh, like the peak, the kids that I grew up watching, all of them spun out of control. Like it was insanity. I, I, I just didn't. I, I was like, I don't get it. They're rich. I, like, what's the problem? Why are they all ending up on drugs? Why? I thought it was like the pressure of being in Hollywood and being forced to produce that. But but then you realize like somebody like Lindsay Lohan like that, she was a golden girl in, in Hollywood. So, of course, any opportunity that she wanted, it was like, what are you going to do for it? Pretty much. Um, and for anybody to say they had been with Lindsay Lohan, I'm sure it was like some, a fucking trophy at the time. And then so she spins out of control. And for the longest time, the media blamed her for it. 
Of course. Yeah, I mean, these are these are kids that are taken at an early age. I mean, this has been well documented by anybody who pays attention. Or I shouldn't say that. Anybody who looks into this will see a pattern of behavior going with from Dan Schneider, Nickelodeon, all the parties in the club, the kids' clubs that they hosted, and stuff that they openly post on Instagram. I mean, it, it's 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 yeah. They don't care. Like they they think they're untouchable. That's what's wild about it. Or, or like they have the confidence that they know they're untouchable, which makes it even scarier. Right, because they have a whole support system around them and people, it doesn't matter whether they're women or men or people of color in this industry, I'm sorry. And I'm, I know that I may be targeted, um, but that's the, that's the truth. Uh, you don't get into a position of power in the entertainment industry. Oh, because that's the one thing I've always said about Oprah. Somebody asked me, was I okay with Oprah being president? I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> They're like, well, why is that? I said, first of all, I said, this is a black woman who's supposedly like outspoken and in your face. And I'm like, that's no, 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 no. Black women who are outspoken and in your face, they actually don't make it anywhere. Like n- not even close to sitting behind, beside Harvey Weinstein. Like they've been best friends their entire lives. I was like, that means she was at the very, at the very least complicit, but at the very worst, she was involved. So like- right. No, I don't want her anywhere near my policies. Please keep her away. No, and, and she, can <laughs> say all, she can say all the nice things that she wants, and I believe that she wants to believe that, or does part of her does believe it. And I don't believe that she was always this way in terms of having to go along with it. But I ask people all the time. They're like, Oprah, she didn't know. And I said, Okay, forget forget the pictures. I said. This was the, the most powerful woman in all of media for two decades with three all billion of media. dollars. All of media, what not just America. Position of power. What did she do with that position of power? She had a whole team of producers and people who did fact checks and research and background checks on people. Mm-hmm. That Harvey Weinstein with his harem and all the people, and he's not the only one, but... and. All the black people in the industry that had come out and try to expose Harvey Weinstein. There were rappers, producers, R&B singers, because apparently Harvey Weinstein was like really into the hip hop industry. Like they worked together a lot, whatever reason. Um, And I remember Dame Dash gave an interview saying like, I had to smack Harvey Weinstein because of something that he had done with one of the R&B singers. And like, it was well known amongst the rap community who he was. And every time they tried to come out, they were threatened. Yeah, and you know, at at that point, like on the totem pole, rap community is like expendable in, in, in most of their minds. The only ones who weren't were like people like Jay Z, um, because he's not really scared. If you piss him off, he's very vindictive. He'll he'll make sure you feel it. So, um, it's it's sad to me that somebody like Oprah would just turn a blind eye for so long to something like that. Uh, and 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 I'm sure she's not the only one. But the reason I feel like Oprah is like a worse case is because of how casual like she can pretend to be the one who's just like i just want to make everybody happy and feel good and and you gotta admit it's probably some projection going on which is why she's always giving stuff away because it makes her like it almost is like exoneration for her like well if i'm giving people stuff with my money then i'm not a bad person for letting all this other stuff happen oh yeah i mean it's like you could take it uh the corporate the corporate CEO of the multinational is making a deal that's going to poison several hundred thousands of people. And he goes home to his wife and kids that night and he's a good husband or a good father, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Well, how about the fact that Oprah spoke at that, uh, that uh, was it, it's the Academy Awards when she, I'm sure she knew, she's not an idiot, that the people who actually accused Harvey Weinstein and started the Me Too movement were disallowed from coming. And she spoke at it, wore the black, you know, in remembrance of it. And, and nobody even said the names of the women that Harvey Weinstein had abused. Right. The closest we've gotten is uh, Aja Argento at Khan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know she's a flawed individual, but that's not the issue that people need to focus on. Yeah, that's irrelevant. It's getting up there and saying that there are more of you in this audience. And I was I was like, name the names, name the names because that's the moment that we're waiting for. And not just yeah. in Hollywood, that's the moment, Dylan Raggeton had his moment several years ago when he 
went off on MSNBC. And yeah, those, are those unscripted moments that are they just turning, they, they just can't, they can't take it anymore. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure there are more coming. Um, but back to this issue, I guess, where what we can do, right? Um, there's a lot of movements out there that get kind of caught up in a hashtag and then they and they get enveloped by the media. What I want to say to everybody is this. It just becomes a it's a it's a regurgitation and, and, it, and it just emotionally is pumping dopamine into our brains thinking changes are happening. But really, you know, the situation is just getting a redress and, and we'll, we'll kind of move on from that. What mm -hmm. this what, what I want to say about the human trafficking issue as a whole is this. This is not something that's going to be eradicated overnight. This is going to be a fight over many years. Mm -hmm. And it's not a movement that has a face in terms of there is no central leader. There is no uh, figurehead. I, I would, in fact, I would say that anytime you see that coming and the media is promoting it, run. Oh, it's, it's always a scapegoat. I mean, it, it was this with Bill Cosby, you know, Bill Cosby, like I always tell people, I say, I'm 100% positive at some point he sexually assaulted somebody. I can guarantee it because he is a male who was in power in Hollywood. But to pretend as it, 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 the weird the weird amount of focus and, and importance that somebody like like uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa Bloom and, uh, and, and her mom put on Bill Cosby while literally being the advisor of Harvey Weinstein, people should have been, okay, well, I can acknowledge he's probably guilty of something, but why the hell is he the only name being called out when we know for a fact he's not the only one guilty of it? Right. I, I will tell you that I can't name names because you were asking me a little bit yeah. of something earlier about people who have acknowledged this. When the Me Too movement started, um, I went to actor friends of mine who were, I wouldn't say they're A-level. They were at a time, but they're kind of like in that B-level, but their names, they're 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 recognizable faces. Many of them I met through the Bernie Sanders campaign. Okay? Yeah. And I remember when they were doing their posts and I left comments and I said, and the children. And there was one acknowledgement from one of them that said, John, I know. Mm. Okay. Now, I've had enough time between then and now and the premiere of the film and these individuals have been invited to the premiere and it was complete silence. They did not want to come. They did not want to be seen there. They didn't care. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't, I, I don't know what they're thinking. But what uh, I can tell you is that when there was the story that came out about through the route about a week or two ago about Trump running some kind of child sex trafficking network through his, through the white house, yeah, which is were, insane that that's, oh my God, don't get me started on that shit. Cause I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did we really, so now it's okay to ponder the idea that people in power may be running sex trafficking rings, but God forbid we ever discussed it when Obama and Hillary were in office. God forbid right. with all the proof, with all the facts, cause Ben Swan, by the way, I don't know if you ever saw his, his oh, yeah. coverage of that. It was yeah. phenomenal. It was loaded with facts and it was conspiracy theory and he lost his job over it. But when Trump gets in power, which made me like, I'm like, shit, I mean, I know he's been guilty of some shit, but clearly he's not as connected to a lot of this as right. you people would like to have thought he was. I don't think he's as right. far in the deep state as what people think he is. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's our only option. I, I, this doesn't make me a Trump supporter, but he's our only option right now. To in wake terms people of up. Yeah, because like, he's uh, so like egregious in some ways and he's so out of the system, which has been indicated by this North Korea deal, which I'm sure you've been following, like just yeah. by the, the very idea that the, the Democrats right now are trying to pass legislation to take away his ability to remove troops from the DMZ. I'm it's, like, it, it's that would insane. kill the deal. That would kill the deal. You're trying to end the deal that would bring peace to the region and finally reintegrate North Korea into the world economy so that they can do, you know, little things like feed their children. It's, it's wow. remarkable what's, what's being exposed right now. And I think that the, the, the more 
this plays out, the more people see it, the more people wake up. Yeah. And what I want to say is more of a hopeful message to maybe some of your viewers that may be on the more progressive side. I, I'm kind of somewhere in this. I consider myself a liberal Democrat like two, three years ago. I came along with Bernie Sanders and now I'm kind of floating in this this ether of, you know, libertarian, progressive kind of, you know, weird space. But actually, I haven't betrayed anything that I am. I'm still the same person. It's just that. I don't have a party. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a party that represents It's okay. Me. I don't need to go to other people's party. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> we have a real party. Well, this is the thing that I think is happening, and I, and I see it in different sides of this. And this is kind of what I want to connect with the human trafficking issue. You're seeing a new center rise in American politics, which is a unified. Obviously, there's the political part of it, and then there is the issue the next wave in. I'm being invited to speak on the New Right Network on Saturday to nice. talk about this issue of human trafficking. Oh, that's an issue that all of us, like, right. one of, are probably our second most convergent issue, that and exposing the corruption within the police state. Absolutely. Those two issues alone are unifying issues for all Americans to know that there are abuses of power and they're exploitive. And when you look at all the signs around you with the increased rise of poverty and disease and death and war and poisoning of the food and the water systems, in spite of all the gains that we have made in our society and the technology that we have yet to unleash, as well as what is here today with all this information that we have, and yet there is declining and diminishing returns for the majority when it really should be a rising tide for yeah. all. Yeah, and it's, it's easy it's too. Hard. It's not even a hard thing to accomplish when we have all the, and by the way, I do wanna say something in case you have not registered for Just Inform, please make sure you do so because these type of conversations are totally blocked on almost every type of social media website out there from Twitter to Facebook. Every time we've tried to address this issue, we're silent. So uh, if this is an issue that you want to continue to talk about, and I encourage you to do the same, John, make sure you go to justinform.com and register, create an account, um, and, and join this evolution that we're starting with social media, where we're trying to take these the, these these uh, social media platforms that really promote vanity and, and lies, really, and propaganda, and keep you purposely in your own echo chambers so that you can't learn and grow from each other. Uh, we are taking that and replacing it with a, with a platform that's built for you, for you to grow personally, uh, for you to grow if you're if you have a, if you're a journalist or if you're a producer like yourself, John, um, and to give you as much visibility as possible. Like I said, if for example, if you have a, a, a little short film that you wanted to produce uh, on the platform, whereas Twitter would probably suppress it, Facebook would make you pay to promote it um, on Justin Forum. If you post that. As a, as a new video, it would actually come up on the all content page if you post it under your platform. And and everybody on the website would be able to see. It. And I think that the stuff that you're doing, it needs to, it really needs to be seen. Um, and yeah. and, and I, I, pe more people are interested in it than what social media tries to convince us it is, than what YouTube tries to convince us it is. You know, there's a lot of things that break through suppression and, and they get these numbers. And I tell people, like, for example, I'm sure you're a Jimmy Dore fan. Uh, most oh, yeah. people are. <laughs> Everybody in LLA is. I know that for a fact. But um, but Jimmy breaks through suppression regularly, still getting 70, you know, thousand to 150,000 views sometimes. And that's while being suppressed. Yeah. So imagine what happened if we had a free flow of information or at least a, a, a centered group area we could grab the info and it, you know and and people are alerted to it and they're like oh hey did you catch this we're being that ability has been taken away from us via facebook and twitter for a number of reasons uh but uh with just inform you would be able to 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 uh pretty much you got your groups you got your content you got a timeline that is baseless it's, there's no partisanship it is literally a, t a open world timeline for everybody's on the website so that nobody can be stuck in an echo chamber so um i i urge you to take advantage of it man because this is this is something i feel like a lot of people need to see no we're we're gonna we're gonna we have a plan to get this movie out uh, i just want to tell your viewers if you're if they're interested today to watch this film 
It's on Vimeo right now. You look up a child's voice. It's on demand for uh, right now. Right now, uh, download. Uh, we're going to roll it out to other platforms later this year. But the main thing I want to tell uh, all of all of your viewers tonight and going forward, we're seeking out partnerships with organizations for showing this to a wider group of people who are ready for this information. They may not know a lot about it. They've heard something about it. This is a perfect film to come into the conversation about human trafficking as an, away, as an awareness, but also as something that you will enjoy from a movie perspective because it has something for everyone there. And it is a very, in spite of the content that you will see, it's handled very deftly. We did very careful job making sure that it wasn't too graphic and that people wouldn't be, uh, would be disturbed, but at the same time, emotionally engaged through the narrative and the characters and their journey. The message of love is one that says to all of us that we will help each other. The, the, the key of this film is one where I see within myself my own weaknesses, my own tragedies, and yet, I find a position of love inside of myself that is there to stand up for a child that is also the child in me. That is what our human family calls us to do. It doesn't matter what your religious background is. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. This yeah. is the human family that we need to unite under because these monsters want to destroy us. This is not a little thing for them. This is part of who they are, and everything that they are flows from outward from this mentality. When you destroy a child's life, both spiritually, you are, you are destroying their soul. You are killing their soul. So for the, those of you who may be on the fence and think, maybe this is, a, this is too much, I just want you to consider this fact. Most of us out there in the world are anti-war. We're not pro bombing and killing and murdering children. Or I would women. say 95% of the world is anti war yeah. easily. These individuals who prop this war industry up drop bombs on kids, blowing their, their bodies to pieces. And if, if you think that this is too hard of a line to, to think about, those individuals who are willing to kill children with bombs, where is the line that says they will then stop the people who are trying to murder and sacrifice and sell kids? Yeah. It's really hard they to argue. They clearly are apathetic to any type of pain or suffering. Yeah, they, they hate human life. Um, so I just want to fact, if they're, they go out of their way to hide you the reasons that we're involved in these wars, they even go out of the way to hide to you to hide from you the involvement that we are in, like with with certain countries for in, in, in like the depth of it, you know, like they always there's certain places that will highlight the refugee crisis, but refuse to address why the refugee crisis exists um, and things like that. And so that if the moment that they're willing to hide the reason that they're in a war, what makes you think that if it will could potentially make them look implicated that they would be honest about something like human trafficking is, and in particular um, trial trafficking. Absolutely. And the other side of that, the other equation of that war and what it gives them is that refugees are and, and immigrants, whether you want to call them illegal, undocumented, whatever, those are the powerless people that these yep. monsters prey on. No and voice whatsoever. Organ harvesting, child sex trafficking, this is well documented, and I give major props to Cynthia McKinney for having the balls to stand in front of Rumsfeld and take him and grill him. That was over, I think, 15 or 16 years ago. It's up on YouTube. Fantastic, because mm. she exposed Dynacorp, which is a front company for the CIA, and they had been, uh, they had been charged with pedophilia of young boys and child sex trafficking and Rumsfeld was still rewarding them with contracts in the billions of dollars to fund their machine. Yeah, that's, that's, the that's what, and you know, it wasn't, a, it was, and they, they were in trouble and they were giving billions of dollars 
And it wasn't like he didn't know about it. It was likely to help a system. That's what's yeah, bad about it. No, he, he flat out admitted in con congressional testimony, and he tried to walk a very fine line. But just watch the video. It's, it's just right there in front of everybody, what he said. And she is, she is be, she's a hero in that regard uh, for, for taking him on. I mean, she paid politically for it. But she did the right thing, and I, I admire people who have the courage of their convictions to stand she up said, to me. Well, I'll tell her I'll, if she tried to come back out right now, I am sure that she would be welcome with those open arms. And it's a new, it's a new, new world. Uh, politically. It, is. it is a new world politically, and it's going to be a new world socially in five to ten years from now. Uh, all of the things that we're fighting over are over a dying system. It's a 20, 20th century system. All of the arguments, it's going to take new ideas, people actually getting out, whether you could call it getting out in the streets, but I think it's really getting out in the community together and deciding that we've had enough, but we're not just going to protest against the power. Those people will never change. I'm just going to tell you, they are never going to change, and mm -hmm. they are happy to have you yell at them all day. In fact, it's no consequence to them whatsoever. You're just wasting your time. Mm -hmm. We have to go and rebuild society. And we have the people to do it. That's the amazing part of it. We have the Americans and the, the global community that want this kind of world, a compassionate world, one that values life and is not divided by a culture war. Yeah. People are tired of that. It's, it's amplified on social media, but really in reality, most people that you go out and talk to, uh, there's a lot of unifying principles you know, it's what? funny. I always said that that was actually the message, the, the the thing that a lot of people for like that were Trump supporters when they were, you know, they, they they lob a lot of bombs sometimes because of the demographic they come from. Right. Uh, and but whatever I would hear like, oh, you know. Like some of the insults they would throw, all I heard, I really what I heard was, why are you trying to tell me that? Because I prefer this particular way of life, that my life, my way of life isn't worth preserving because it will not you know it, it doesn't reflect yours or it, it's not as important in your mind as yours that you can't gain from it in your system like you know i don't I, I, like you know they always make fun of guys with pickup trucks and like the country way of life um the outdoor living there are people like oh if you live that way of life you're an idiot like it's that type of people and it's like no they're really intelligent people who still prefer that way of life because it's just it's a very it's for whatever reason, maybe they prefer nature. Maybe they just like not being in the suburbs. Maybe they just like not being, you know, in the urban community. They like the the the, the peace that comes with being with, with nature and hunting and fishing. And it's necessary tools too, which also almost makes you think that it's like a concerted effort to drive people away from that way of life, so that people can't take care of themselves and do become reliant on the system. But that's yeah. really what I feel like a lot of people are complaining. Just don't take away my culture. Uh, and say that it's not any better than yours. Right. No, I've, I've heard those arguments and I've heard, you know, out here in Hollywood because, you know, they believe they're more educated, more cultured, more tolerant. Because yeah, they, they think that. I've met some of these Hollywood people, man. They, they're not that smart. They're not really. No, they're not that aware. Um, but I want to kind of piggyback off that story. I was mm -hmm. dating a girl for a while. She she told me she went to Texas. She said, oh, my God, I worked at this as a bartender in this bar in this small little tiny town. And uh, these people were rednecks and this, that, and the other. And she goes, it was scary. And then she told me a story about one of the uh, workers in the kitchen who had gotten mm -hmm. a tooth infection. And the infection went into his jaw. And his body swelled three times the size and he was in a hospital for a month. Every single person in that restaurant, from the manager to the waitresses and all the customers for an entire month, took every single tip, every dollar of every single tip and donated it to a fund so that he could pay his medical bills. Without the media being there, without some major campaign or hoorah, all these people got together and wanted to help one of their own and they tipped more than they normally would because they knew that was going to them. that is the human family that we have with all the destruction and devastation that the system has caused us to to be divided up and to be to have our lives destroyed eating bad food having bad information being being separated from each other mm -hmm. those are our brothers and sisters those yeah. are the people that 
despite our differences, we can coexist. We I mean, really think, think coexist. Bernie Sanders gave us the campaign of Bernie Sanders, the movement that he started gave us a huge glimpse into that on a larger scale. Um, Republicans and, and Democrats and progressives and libertarians. And, and I mean, Ron Paul came out and was like, oh, Bernie Sanders is the most libertarian candidate there is that, that, that exists in the world. I was like, whoa, my libertarian <laughs> friends are not going to be happy about this one. But and it's be in there. I know why he's saying that. He's saying because like Bernie Sanders wants people to have the liberty of living. Because when you if you want to be able to start a good business, how are you gonna run a business if you can't even afford that like to take care of your health right now? So what happens when you when you you are unhealthy and now your business is collapsed and you have medical bills? Like that movement of moving closer towards really I, I would call it like the movement a movement of autonomy, as in the bills that we're paying. To you all make them fucking work for us because that's why we're paying you why are we giving you taxes if i have no fucking idea what the hell they do right and everybody, everybody everybody agrees everybody like you know some there are people on the right who take it way too far they're like zero taxes whatsoever and i'm in the camp of look i don't mind paying a little bit but you can't tell me in the same breath you get a raise you get permanent health care you get permanent retirement and I got to figure this shit out my, on my own. Then I'll just keep my damn money and save it, and then I'll be able to take care of myself. And I think a lot of the country sees it the same way. The anti-war aspect of Bernie is one of his, one of right now his most tumultuous like conversations because people uh, don't like some of the things that he says, or they don't like votes that he made in like 2000, which I don't really blame him for given the time period because we were all being deceived. Um, but that the fact that people are so like rabidly angry about even the slightest misstep in his war rhetoric lets you know that that was a big uh, a big point of coalescence amongst the entire movement because we really are tired of war why are we like f killing millions of iraq like that was a genocide it was a genocide and no one would, we call it the war in iraq no it's a genocide unquestionably there are people who have come back from that war more damaged and didn't take a single bullet just because they knew what was happening was wrong. Yeah, we we uh, I dated a girl about a year ago who was Arab Muslim from Bahrain in that area. And she told me that um, this was the first time that I was shocked. She wanted Trump to win. Oh, shit. And I said, <laughs> and he said, no, she goes, we know what we're getting with Clinton. Yeah, and it's going to be yeah, it's going to be escalation for the last thirty years, and now what they have because of all the depleted uranium tip missiles and 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 shells that have dusted the entire region for three decades, they have breast cancer in people that have have no history of it coming in at thirty years of age or twenty years of age. Oh, young from, yeah, that's a big. Oh, that's actually a really big scandal. Like and it involved vaccinations. It's one of the reasons that vaccinations started becoming so mandatory, and they started increasing because they sent like two hundred thousand people over, and then they came back with uh, the Agent Orange, or excuse me, Anthrax. Which, by the way, if you all don't know, is a form of Agent Orange. We just switched the name so that we couldn't be implicated in it because we gave it to Saddam Hussein when he was on our side, um, and then the the depleted nuclear um, radiation that was being carried in the genitalia of males and then being passed down to their kids. And it was a, the reason that the OKC bombing happened was actually to cover that up because the, the government was going to be culpable and there was actually open court cases to sue them. Yeah. So uh, it's- I think, You know, the more people like you and others that, that just continue to speak out, the closer we get to that, that critical mass point because it, it will ride in waves. It's going to have its lulls. It's going to have its victories, and it's going to have its defeats. But I'm saying that the American people and the global world is rising in consciousness, and they can't stop it. They've lost complete control of the narrative. That's why when you and I look at Maddow or anybody else, we go, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> and we were, we Bro, were like, "Man," I, and the most powerful. I think the mo one of the most powerful. Uh, uh, moments in, in that I've experienced since really this entire movement started was that the last attack on Syria yeah. because 
it's that wasn't the first time that we all got an update from C our CNN app or MSNBC apps or whatever, where it says, oh, we launched attacks on Syria. That wasn't the first time, not even close. Right. And we all just kind of, oh, wow, well, LeBron's back in the final, so let me go ahead and open that instead because this is normal. That last time, everybody around the world, I remember they had to take it off of Twitter because it was 3 million tweets all at once of people and wow. just furious at what was taking place. Because it, it's like, it's just, we have become more united in this conscious uh, and, and just conscious and, you know, we just have reached this level of consciousness. We're like, look, almost every single thing that we've done and that we're doing is wrong. And we, when you have somebody say, fine, come in and investigate. And you have reporters saying, come in and investigate. And even Trump was like, well, I think we should investigate. And then you just... Boom, launch rockets the moment that they say investigate. Everybody's going to be dumbfounded. And we were, and I think it was really kind of more so infuriating. We were like, oh, so this is how you're operating. We were paying attention this time. Like, so this is really how it's going down. And then you paint somebody like Rand Paul, who came out and was like, there's absolutely no evidence of chemical attacks in Syria. And they were, oh, he's a conspiracy theory. Oh, no, 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 no. He's on the committee that deals with this shit. That's how he knows there's no fucking evidence. <laughs> and it was echoed across the international community. So it's it's disheartening to see what they've been able to get away with. It's almost heartbreaking to know that we've been letting it go, like letting giving a pass really as a as a people for so long. But I think that you're right. I feel like there is a great awakening happening and it, and it comes in waves. There's some exhaustion, but right. we're really on the crux of something huge. Uh Thank, we got to thank Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump for that. Really, they're both equal in their own weird way. Absolutely um, correct. They were two rising forces reflecting despair mm -hmm. and disgust at a system that had rotted itself to its core. And that's what I'm finding in this through this yeah. journey. I mean, I, I went binge diving into YouTube land with. Alex from Alex Jones to uh, all the way to Jimmy Dore and everything in between. And, and what I'm seeing across the board is there is a, uh, for anybody who's, who's wanting to look into what the facts are, not mm -hmm. what somebody says, we are destroying a figurehead because we have been in the cult of personality. That's part of the reason why the American public has been lulled for so long with Obama and, and to a degree Bush and Clinton before, and, and can with Trump too. That's the other thing. It's, it's, this is not, oh, yeah. we cannot be in a celebrity, we're, as much as we may reject- we can't focus on any individual. I'm, we can't look to an individual to solve our problems or to be perfect. No, but this is the last, this is the last time because uh, we've exhausted all other options, basically. Yeah, and literally. I would say that the populist movement, in reality, if you look at it historically over the last 35 years, going back to 92, look at Ross Perot on that debate stage. Go back on YouTube and, and watch him. They mocked him. They made fun of him. He won all of those debates, and he sounded like Bernie Sanders, by the way. If oh, they just, tried to mock Bernie, too, and it, but oh. it didn't work because... It turned out, I mean, social media fixed that because Ross Perot was not wrong. And I would think a lot of people agreed with Ross Perot. The problem was we didn't know we were out there. Most people did not know, but uh, there was enough rising tide of that. And what he had was he also had the authenticity and the genuineness. If you go back and look at him, when he speaks about all of these issues, he is not talking like a politician. He's talking like a grandfather and a father. Yeah. And he may have some ideas that you politically don't agree with, but he was starting to talk about, quote, the deep state. He was talking about it with two monsters standing right next to him. Right next to him, oh, him and nobody even knew at the time. Bill Billy, heroin Bill from the CIA in Arkansas mm -hmm. and the, the head of the CIA right over here. Yep. Oh, my and, God. And... and you look I think at what's so funny is that it was that's such a Bernie. Like it's you're right. It's almost like we have one of these opportunities. We've had. I mean, going back to Henry Wallace, right? Same thing happened with the with the FDR Henry Wallace situation, where Truman was literally the first president to come from replacing a, a vice president during 
a, 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 a in the middle of a, a, a term essentially that's pretty much what happened FDR was going to win, and usually you bring your vice president with you. That's usually how that shit works. Um, didn't happen that Wallace, time. Though. Wallace was going to win. He won in the first round, but then they saw all the people in the back room. Yeah, they, they conspired. They to conspired against him. Vote, and they flipped. And he would have changed the face of the planet. I actually believe there probably wouldn't even be a British Empire anymore, as far as the colonies are concerned, because he hated. He hated the empire. He hated racism. He was speaking outwardly against segregation and and he was like he said internationally like we need to desegregate and that shit was dangerous for them and then you got what you got uh, uh ray uh ray mcgovern same yeah. situation and then like you said the and so when bernie comes and what the difference was he went straight to social media because he knew that the mainstream is going to screw him and then you had people i still remember when i was when i was president of carolina students for bernie sanders people were saying yeah man he's a communist but at least I trust him. And they were going to vote for him despite him, t t you know, he, their definition of communism is way, way off and socialism and all that good stuff. But they were going to vote for him just because they believed that he wanted the best. And at the very bare minimum, I would trust that over anything. If you genuinely want the best and you've proven to be a resilient and honest human being, I would take that and trust that you will at least put people in power that are going to want the same thing over any Obama pretty smiling face any goddamn day. So um thank you, man. I wanna appreciate I, I wanna say how much I appreciate you first of all for coming on the show. Uh okay. you know I wanna uh, say this because I watched you from that very first day you did that that video in your phone. Really? That's wild. Wow. Throwback in the back, car. Old school. <laughs> Back in the car, man. You knew me before I had the microphone. Look. Oh, no, and, and look at you now, man. I mean, <laughs> you got to know. Started from the bottom. Started from the bottom, man. Hey, but that's how all of this is happening, is that people are inspired by, first, you being inspired by this event and it continuing that journey within you. And it's yeah. a connecting point for so many people because you give a voice to an issue. Even if I disagree with you, I trust you because you're authentic and you're genuine and you're committed and you're dedicated to that. And if we all do our little part in this way, whether it be having a radio or a, a show, having it be a film, having it be something you do, being a good parent or a, a loving aunt or uncle to a child, these are deposits of gold in the bank for Absolutely. the future. Absolutely. And more we can more of us than than they want us to believe. Oh yes, very much so. So I just I didn't want to interrupt, but I just wanted to thank you, Nico, because you've inspired me, and and the whole community has. And I'm going to keep going because I believe that this is the right way to go, and follow, and I'll keep learning, but I'm going to keep trying to reach out and do more of these kinds of projects and these kinds of films that raise the consciousness of people and allow you us- No, we need to do, we gotta get together and do a film about exposing social media because God knows, I could tell you a lot about that, man. Like how it's it pretty much, you can link all the funding for all the major sites that like Facebook and Twitter. And uh, there was one app that came out called Brigade uh, and I was like, this is really weird. This is kind of suspicious. It's really awkward. That probably means, because they were like being really intrusive. I'm like, I bet that means that they're probably funded by somebody they shouldn't be funded by. And it's always the same answers. Um, and you can do it in, 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 a, in a way that's like how you presented it. Uh, you make it palatable. You make it entertaining. You, you appeal to people's interests um, very much. So there's, a, I think, the mirror, Black Mirror, something like that on Netflix, does it, does it think, like shit that we think about that we suspect are happening and could potentially happen. Yes. It, yeah. They do a very good job of you like, holy shit, you know, I was thinking about that shit the other day and that shit looks really, it doesn't look like it's that unrealistic now. <laughs> you know, and it, it's, it's a possibility of humanity and technology if we're not vigilant. And if we're not vigilant, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so. I think you're gonna see a lot more projects like that, films like that. I think, I think that in the next three to five years, it's all gonna, you're gonna have the franchise studio stuff and then there's gonna be this big vacuum left over for these stories like Black Mirror, Westworld and all these. They're, they're all genre, 
but they're telling you something about us. But they're they're real. Yeah. This genre, but we're on the way there. I remember the one about the the. It was like you have like your own score, as like as a person. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Social- and I'm like, yeah, that shit's just kind of like now. I don't know why we're pretending like that's that that. Yeah, it's it's like it pops out of their head. Yeah, that's cool, but. The shit's already, you don't have to pop out of your head. Look at what you already have by your head all the time. Yeah, portable you know? tracking device. <laughs> ex- ex- literally, man. It's it's insane. People will will take, your, you know, deem you valid. At even I'm sure it's the same for you in the entertainment industry, but even as a journalist. Well, how many subscribers do you have? Because it probably means I should take them more serious. You know, whether or not to take me seriously or not, or anybody for that matter. Jimmy is blown up, and I am extremely thankful for that because that, is was a whoo that was a win for us I tell you i mean i'll tell you <laughs> but you know it's crazy that he was crazy jimmy during the election but now he is jimmy the fucking prophet <laughs> right but he's always been saying these things no he's he's a great man i mean there he he totally he doubled down tripled down and threw through his his uh his, his career life. on the line man he fell on the sword and he came out like out of the like a phoenix out of the damn ashes compared to tyt <laughs> you know oh, to the point where they can't even do shit with them now they're like well shit we can't get rid of them you know we, it's we, kind we, of embarrassing in a way i feel bad for him because i know at some point i don't know it what is. it's but it's a it's a stressful situation for him i can tell you that it's a stressful situation for him um yeah. but he has handled it better than most ever could have um being in a hostile environment like that where people yeah. legitimately believe a bullshit narrative. And then you have to be the guy that doesn't call out the fact that your boss took $20 million from major Clinton donors. Like, it, I know it's taking all the strength in the world for him not to call him out. Like, bitch, really? Do you really believe this shit? Like, for one one, one day you're a Republican, then you're a Libertarian, then you're a Democrat, then you're a Progressive, then you're back to Hillary, now it's everything's about right. Like, it seems like you just go where the money goes, bro. It seems like you just go where the money blows. So well, that's a different discussion for a different day. Look, John, where can people find you at? Go on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, I'm at no restrictions. Um, there's a nice big blue logo there. It's got some uh, some pictures at the top of our films. No restrictions, ENT.com. And uh, also, we're going to be launching a website for A Child's Voice within the next week. We're going to have the film up there. For the meantime, people can go to Vimeo and look up A Child's Voice, A Child's Voice uh, you can rent it or you can buy it on demand. It's at a reasonable price. I think $3.99 to rent and stream for 72 hours and then $9.99 to own it. But even if you don't uh, have the funds to do so, share it with your friends. We want to get this <laughs> message out there to as many people as possible. Good stuff, man. Thank you once again so much for coming on. Uh, let me know when you, you, you launch the website so we can go ahead and make a blast about it. Um, Hey, uh, I hope you, you registered for Justin Form too. I love to see you be able to promote it on the site. Like I said, uh, we can even make sure we can even do a blast uh, for the whole website to know that you you dropped your website. So that because that's like I said, this is an important issue to me uh, and Tim and, and Suzanne, who are co-founders in the site. And, you know, I have I have six siblings uh, every day. Wow. I'm you know, I three of them are sisters and every single day I'm worried when they go to work. I'm worried when, you know, they go to a party. I'm just like, do you have to go to a party? Do you have to go to the club? Do you have to go to a bar? Do you have to go to McDonald's? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and so, and, you know, Suzanne has kids, Tim has kids, and, and it can happen to anybody. And everybody thinks it can't happen to them until it happens. So thank you uh, so much for pursuing this. Thanks for everybody who watched and is, is, is creating the awareness for this issue. Uh, and make sure that you register for Justin Form as well to keep up with all uh, these, these great conversations that are absolutely necessary for really the progression of this country and the rest of the world. And always remember, people, more than anything else, find your balance. Peace. Peace, man. Peace, bro.